there and start this over again. Hello! <laughs> so happy to see you guys here. Oh my goodness gracious, what a day it has been. Um, it's It's been quite busy behind the scenes and I, I actually finished my projects uh, just today. So I'm, uh, I'm really excited to show you what we've got going on. The theme really today is, is spring chickens. So you can see the adorable little chicks behind me. I just thought they were the absolute sweetest. Um, and they actually reminded me when I saw this, this photo, uh, they reminded me of when my son was really, really little and I took him to, uh, to a photographer and she had live chicks and it was right around Easter. And so we have these adorable pictures of him with these live chicks. Oh, and if you saw the lights go on, my husband is remembering. <laughs> we had the lights turned down because I actually had a migraine today. So, uh, so we're kind of dimming the lights. If you see me squinting a little bit, it's because I'm really, really light sensitive today. But, but I am here. I have some energy and I'm feeling good and I can't wait to show you what we've got going on. So um, let me give a shout out to who is here. Oh my goodness, I am always so thrilled to see that people show up for this. It surprises me every time and I just love it. So let me give a shout out. I'm looking on YouTube right now and who's here? We've got, uh, we've got Sue and Linda, Lisa, Maddie, um, Ezzy, Susan. Hi everybody, so good to see everybody. Oh my goodness gracious, Shelly, Marilyn, Jenny, I'm, 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 I'm hoping I'm not skipping everybody's names. Christy, let me take a look over here at, um, at Facebook and see. Um, we've got Judy and Sharon. Hi, Sharon and Sandra. Um, I can't see everybody scrolling here. Oh, Margaret Chapman is here again. Hi, Margaret and Judy and, oh my goodness, uh, Candace and Cindy. Cindy Patty, hi. Um, it's again absolutely a joy so um, first thing I want to show you though before we get into the spring chicken I'm gonna switch cameras because I want to show you something that we've got and it's it's gonna be for um, for everybody so hold on give me just a quick second let me switch cameras okay this set right here um, you know with everything that's going on it's a little bit bright for some reason everything is super duper bright let me change the brightness on this Let's see if I can make that a little bit better so you guys can see that better. All right, hopefully that's a little bit better. Alan, I think we got too much light going on here on the product. But anyway, uh, we created this stamp set. This is a 4 by 6 stamp set. It's called Today's Heroes. Uh, this is actually going to be a giveaway. This is something that we're going to be giving away for free in every order uh, that comes through our website. Uh, this is going to be free um, for your next order. It's a 4x6 stamp set. It's super, super adorable. We're going to be giving this out with, with every shipment. Um, just, I mean, really well, while supplies last. But we've, we've got a pretty good number of them. So if you check this out, I just think they're so cute. Uh, we've got some, we've got nurses and doctor. We've got a nurse, doctor, patient. How cute is that? We've got a police officer, a school teacher. And we've got um, a girl and a boy both either delivering groceries or delivering food. We've got sentiments in here. This one says, the world is better because of you. The world needs more heroes like you. Thanks for all you do. Not all heroes wear capes, which I thought was so cute. And then real heroes wear uniforms like yours. So I absolutely love this. This, um, I'm going to tell you, my lifesaver... <laughs> during this whole pandemic has been these two people right here delivering groceries <laughs> that has been absolutely wonderful so i'm i'm so thrilled that um that this is going to be a set that we're going to be giving out with every single shipment that goes out um so i i i hope you will get one of these um i absolutely love it and then on the back of course we have you know the picture of how you can color that up and it's a four by six stamp set it's made right here in the united states so i i just love it i hope you guys do too um today i promised that we're going to be working with a polka doodle stamp set and this one is actually called spring chicken and i think it's absolutely perfect for this time of year and it is just truly a happy 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 set so i'm going to switch the camera one more time because i want to show you this this is the stamp set it's a four by six stamp set it is super duper cute um, on the front here, we have the image colored, so you can get a feel for how you can color it. We have two sentiments in here, and then we have all these other little accessory pieces here. It's a clear stamp set, and look how cute this is. I've already stamped because I made the project, so you can see that these are already loved. Um, I want to show you, here's my thing. I wanted to make two projects today, and I want to 
walk you through them you know as much as I can we've only got an hour so I do have to do some of the prep work ahead of time um, but I want to show you I, I, I went ahead and I colored up this little girl she's just the cutest thing we call her Holly she's just so sweet um, I received I think I mentioned to you I received my new mark my new uh, watercolor markers water, watercolor pens and I've been playing with those practicing with them because I'm going to be putting together a live uh, class for you to teach you at least how I watercolor I'm not a professional watercolorer but um, and I think people are always lately surprised to find out that I am a crafter <laughs> and that I know how to do this stuff because I don't craft as much as I as I used to, but back in the day, I was actually a designer for other companies and their products. So watercoloring was my go-to. So she is watercolored. And I wanna show you this set right here so you can see the detail. Okay, so not, not everything on here is the stamp. And just so you know, it looks kind of like what we call no line coloring because I stamped her, I stamped her in this, this gray we call this alloy it's a hybrid ink so you could color with markers or watercolors or whatever so i stamped her in this alloy which is a gray and it came and it's a nice light color so then when i go over those lines with either well i did it with watercolor so when i go over those lines with the watercolor that line kind of kind of disappears and it ends up looking like um like well what we call no line so it looks like it was not stamped now you can see at the bottom here I added some little flowers of my own. This is something that I will actually do in the watercolor class and then I grounded her with some green. And I guess a question for you if you want to let me know your opinion here. I was originally going to do a watercolor class with flowers but I'm thinking that I might do this image if you guys want to see this image instead it might be a two-part class where we color where we learn how to paint her skin her hair and her body and then the next the next class maybe we'll do this one week of Tuesday and Thursday the next one would be um, or maybe a Saturday but next one would be then the background and then we could finish we could make a card out of it then so it might end up being a two-part because it does take a little bit longer to watercolor and I want to make sure I can take the time to teach you my technique anyway so this is my image and I want to show you this paper pack that I chose to work with. I love this paper pack because it's all about florals and springtime. It's called Country Lane. And a lot of the colors in here, like this, this beautiful kind of teal color here, and we've got the yellow and we've got some purples. I thought it worked really, really well with the way that I colored the image. And just so you know, know normally when I'm coloring an image, I will grab my paper first and then I will choose colors from the paper to color my image. But I just sat down and just started coloring, so I did not know what paper I was gonna use ahead of time. So this one worked out perfect when I was going through my paper packs. And I want to get your opinion on something here. So when I was going through this Country Lane paper pack, I pulled these two right here. So I knew when I thought about the card I was going to make with this, I knew it was going to be an A2 card, so I have my A2 card base. It opens up, okay, so A2, if you don't know, is four and a quarter by five and a half when it's folded. And I cut a quarter inch off of the length and the width of my image, and so I have a little bit of a border there and I don't want it to be just white on white I decided I wanted to pull one of those colors either the yellow or the blue because that's what I liked in the paper pack so here's my question to you maybe you can sh give me a shout out with your comment do you like it if I put it on the yellow I like how it pulls out the yellow or do you prefer if I put it on the blue check and if I put on the blue check, it's going to pull out the blue in her hat and in the little flower pot. So I'm going to have my husband, if you can give me a quick little comment here, let me know what you think. And my husband's going to look at your comments and he's going to give me an idea for which, who, you know, how, how we're doing with that and what you guys want to see. Blue, yellow, blue, blue, yellow, yellow. <laughs> he's going blue, yellow, blue, blue, yellow, yellow, blue. <laughs> 
absolutely even right now. It's he said it's absolutely even. Come on, guys, I need you guys to tell two me which one because I was blues. undecided. It's like 50-50. Oh my goodness. Maybe do half and half. I can't do half and half. <laughs> sure you can. All right, let me see. Let do me a, look and see. Do a left and bottom one color and a top. He's trying to right tell me to color. use both of them, but he's not a crafter, so he doesn't know how how he's making it kind of difficult. So I'm looking in here, and you know what? I'm actually seeing, I think I'm seeing more yellows. No, you're not. Blue, 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 and yellow, 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 blue, blue, please, blue, blue for sure. Oh, well, maybe I'm wrong. Yellow. You know what? Maybe I'm wrong. They want you to show them yellow again. All right, here it is. Let me show Did you yellow you again. Do a hard down, a band down the center. Well, I can't horizontal. do a band down the center. Down the center, horizontal. All right, here it is with yellow, and here it is with blue. I'm, you know what? I think it looks a little more cozy with the blue. And I think I'm actually seeing more blues. So <laughs> now that I'm looking, oh, see, yellow, yellow, yellow. Everybody starts going, say yellow then. Oh, you guys are killing me. Well, you've learned a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned a lesson. My, oh, my goodness. Okay. You know what? I'm looking at it on the camera, and I'm going to go blue because I just think it's brighter with the blue. You should have painted two of them. Okay. So we're going to go blue. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We are going to go blue. I'm going to show you how this is going to come together. We're going to use blue. I'm going to set that aside. But what I need is a sentiment on this thing. There's too much light on this card because you can't see. It's, in, it's your thing. Let me, let me go like this a little bit. The raw, and the raw feed looks perfect. Oh, it looks good on the raw feed? My raw feed, so your oh, adjustment. Oh, it's okay, I see. Let me see, let me go like this. That, I think that looks a little bit better there. Now you can see a little more of the color. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to go ahead and add the sentiment. Let me get my arms in the camera. Now I had a tough time deciding how I was going to do this. Yeah, I'll tell you, sometimes when I'm, putting, when I'm putting a card together, it just comes together really, really easily. And for some reason, when I was done coloring this one, it took a little bit longer for me to figure out what I was going to do. And I think that's just kind of, you know, the way it happens sometimes. There's two sentiments in here. We've got one that says, live life in full bloom, and then another that says, you'll always be my spring chicken. And I really wanted to use Live Life in Full Bloom. I think it's such a beautiful sentiment. Um, and I didn't use either of the chickens on this card. But this, the, you'll always be my, my spring chicken, really fits the shape that I have to go with. And I think because it says spring on it, I think it's going to be beautiful. And I think it's still going to work, even though I don't have a bird on here. I don't think I have to have a bird on here. So this card is actually really really simple simple card because I want the focus of this card to be on the image and what it says now one of the things I planned was I wanted to have a little bit of because I have a lot of white space up here so I thought what can I use to take up some of that white space so I actually decided that I was going to put whatever color I was going to use, whether it was blue or the yellow, I was all prepped and ready with this little band. And I thought, I'm going to put a little band of color up there. Because I have all this color down here, and then all that white up top. And it was just, it was going to look very off balance to me. So I'm laying this piece of paper here, this little strip, because I want to get an idea for where I'm going to place my sentiment. Let me make sure I got my sentiment in the right direction. Wouldn't that be awful if I did it upside down? Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, so there's my sentiment. Let me get this closed. And I also thought about stamping the Im or uh, stamping the sentiment in a colored ink in one of the colors of that I used to paint it. But then I decided that I really want the sentiment to stand out on its own. So I did decide to use my Raven ink for it. Make sure that's in the right direction.
Oh, it looks perfect. Absolutely perfect. So let me go ahead and wipe off the excess here. Look how cute that is. I just think it's adorable. Okay. Next up, we're going to do an the Oh, I left my magnets out. Oh my goodness, <laughs> they came to see. This is why I have that tape. They came together, and I have the tape on them so that they don't stick because they're a nightmare to get apart. Okay, so here's my card. I'm going to go ahead and put this check background paper. flat on the card front. There we go. There we go. And then I want to put this piece right at the top and I'm going to leave a little bit of that white up above it. So it's, oopsie, it's just going to give me a little bit of an offset, a little mishap with my tape. Okay, let me move this down here so I can see what is going on. The camera thinks that it sees the face and it wants to do a, an auto, um, auto focus on it. Let me try not to get my head in the camera. There we go. Actually, I don't want to use that. I want to pop this up on a little bit of foam. There's my big old foam roll. I like having some dimension on my card. Boy, if you could see the way that we used to do cards, if you're not familiar uh, with my history, we used to make cards that were very, very shabby chic. They had tremendous number of things all over them. So for me to do a clean and simple card, it's very out of the ordinary for my history. And it's something that I am really enjoying perfecting. There we go. So there is my card. And that's all there's going to be. I'm not going to put anything else on it. I just want the sentiment and the image to speak for itself. Now you could color this image up with your alcohol markers. You could color it with, you know, with watercolors, with pencils, whatever you want. But look how sweet and simple that is. I think it's super sweet. I love it. And then you have that little bit of dimension there because I popped that up on foam. I really like that. I think it's so pretty. Okay, so that is number one. And number two, I didn't. I did a little bit of the work on card number two, but we are we are going to do a little more crafting on that one. Do we have any questions from anybody? Yes, the questions are on the board. Oh, I've got questions <laughs> up front <laughs> here. I'm sorry, I forgot. Maddie is asking, what watercolor markers did you use? I actually used the uh, the Karin. Uh, it's K-A-R-I-N. And Alan, do you want to give me the box? Yes. Is this the box? Yes, that's it. Let's see if I can get this in the camera. I used these. The Karin Brush Marker Pro. I have this. This is the, the, the big pack. It's a 72, uh, 72 pack, I think it is. And um, um, these are the markers. I have a lot of them out because I used a bunch of them. Um, we're actually going to have these in the store pretty soon, but this and that, that those are what I'm going to use for the watercolor class. And then Sharon is asking. Making fun of oh, accent. Sharon's making fun of my accent. I don't have an accent. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon, I saw that message the other night, and I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> See, there's your accent. I don't have an accent. <laughs> You're so funny. Okay, so this is the next card. All right, this is the beginning of it. 
I really, really, really wanted to use the accessory. So the first card we used the, the main image, and now I want to use this little, I wanted to use this little pot with the flowers and the little chicks. And all I did, I stamped them in black and I just colored them really, really quickly and easily. Um, I didn't want to spend the time coloring the whole thing because I, um, you know, we've only got an hour and sometimes it's, it's just not a whole lot of fun watching somebody color unless it's a coloring class kind of thing. So, but what I wanted to do with this, <coughs> I stamped what, you know, I stamped the flower pot and I stamped the chicks and I cut it out. I used this practically square uh, die set and I used the second largest die here to cut it out. And then I was looking at it and I thought this needs some more up in here. And this is part of my process when I'm creating. And I thought, what can I use? And I, I didn't have really what I wanted in the stamp set. So I went to my other stamp sets that I have and I grabbed these, which we've already used before. I loved this little bumblebee and I loved these butterflies. So this is, this is kind of an example where I would say, you know, don't be afraid to kind of mix and match your, your products, your stamp sets, whether they're from all from one company or different companies. It doesn't really make a difference. If you can use different sentiments and different um, little, you know, stamps and things, then, then and mix and match them, go for it because you're, all you're doing is making your own personalized scenes and you're making your stamps go farther. So er, Erlene, is that, Erlene is asking what paper am I using? This paper that I'm using for uh, for the well, it's two different papers. For uh, for the watercolor, I used uh, Fabriano. It's a um, where is it? It's a it's a oh boy, where is it? it it's so yeah, it's got the purple, Alan. Yeah. Can you grab that for me? I'm trying. Yes. Sorry, Alan's grabbing it for me. Okay. This is the watercolor paper that I used. Okay, it's Fabriano. It's a hot press, which the, the hot press is really nice. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a really smooth. It's extra white. It does have a little bit of a creamy color to it. And this one is actually a block. Um, but it's a block, which is like a, it has the, the, the glue, I guess, on all four sides. And you're just, you're going to have a corner where you're going to be able to lift. You're going to be able to slide something through to get each individual sheet off of there. But I love that paper. It's absolutely, Fabriano is my favorite. Now for these flowers here, I'm coloring with a, um, I used my Copics for them. So these I actually use Nina Solar White cardstock. So let me get this. And I'm going to put this little bumblebee on here. And I'm going to stamp this. Now this, I started stamping for this card in the uh, in Raven. So with this one, I wanted a different look. Not so worried about. Okay, I don't think I got enough ink on there. I'm not so worried about I, you know, having it look like no line coloring with this. I wanted this to look really crafty and just really, really cute. There we go, there's my little bumblebee. Let me wipe that off. So this bumblebee is from the Strawberry Patch set. And like I said, look to what you've already got. You know, you, you, you'll be amazed. I, I find that, you know, when I'm shopping for things, I have a certain, you know, I have things I like and I have things that I, that I don't like. And I think that um, you develop a certain style, you know, with what you like. And so I think a lot of the time you're going to be able to find things within the same style in your collection. And so you're going to be able to use them together and kind of mix and match. So this one is the Pixie Pals, and I'm grabbing these little butterflies from the Pixie Pals. And I'm going to stamp them. Let's make sure that's upright. So here's my butterflies. Let me 
me get that another one. There we go. So I think that gives me a more full scene. I thought about putting clouds up there and I've done a lot with clouds and I just thought, you know, I don't really, I, I really wanted there to be just more little characters on here. One of the things I'm really enjoying a lot is making scenes with a lot of characters and our stamps are absolutely perfect for that. We designed them that way so that you can really get a full scene with a lot of action and activity going on with your characters. So let me put that one away. There we go. Now I'm going to set this aside. Because it's a hybrid ink, it is, oops, we just lost the camera. There we go. Because it's a hybrid ink, that is going to take a moment to dry, and I want it to be really good and dry. So I'm going to set that aside for a moment. Let's put this up here. And we're going to start building the rest of the card. I do want to show you kind of how I thought about layering this and I pulled this paper, this is the floral from that same paper pack and I just loved it. This I have here, this die cut, is the largest die from the scalloped rectangle, which again I absolutely love, I think it's so pretty, I love scallops because they're just so feminine and fun. And then this is a different scallop, let me move this out of the way. This is a different scallop from the um, uh, Practically Square set. And I think that even though they are both scallops, I think they look just beautiful, so sweet when we layer them together. And I'm gonna have one up a little bit higher than the other. And then we'll put the sentiment right down here. So, let's start building this. I'm gonna have this go right on the bottom here like that. So I've got my A2 card base. I'm going to go ahead and put my floral background pattern flat on the card. We'll fold these little pieces of tape over so they're out of my way. I'm going to make sure that my leaves and everything are going up and in the right direction. Put this down in here carefully. There we go. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is see how this is going to look. And I want to get my sentiment on there. And that's one of, one of the mistakes I always make. I start assembling my card and I forget to put my sentiment down. <laughs> so I want to make sure and get that on there. So I'm going to put this down here. I'm going to line this up right here on my Misty. So I know where I want my sentiment to go. And I'm going to use the same spring chicken sentiment that I used on the other. I like the shape of it. I think it works really, really well because it's kind of a rectangular shape. And I'm going to center this in the space that I have. Does that look straight? I think it's straight. I'm going to get this out of the way now. Put my magnets down. Carmen is saying, do you sell the stamping board that I used the misty, the misty. No, we do. I do not sell the misty. I'm sorry. I have do them. have. Yeah, you you can get the misty from my sweet petunia directly. There's a lot of stores where you can get it. Actually, I've got a new one on the way. Um, Hero Arts has a, a a black misty, which I like a lot. <laughs> How is yours not black? Mine's not black because <laughs> this one has pink around it. Okay. Which works really, really well in my studio because I have a lot of pink in my studio. Um, but I also have a lot of black accents around the house and I know it's kind of crazy that I'm matching my <laughs> crafting tools to my decor. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> my husband gets it, I think. At least he's... At least he's learned to stop complaining about it. <laughs> he may not understand the crazy 
but he tolerates it. <laughs> I hope you guys have a husband who tolerates it too. Okay, so let me get this out of the way. And I am going to go ahead. I think we're going to actually finish early today. Oh my goodness, what are we going to do if I finish early? Let's see, where's my foam? Okay. Here we go. So I want to prep this up. Here's the thing. When I lay this flat, I think it looks flat. So I'm going to go ahead and prep this, this uh, white cardstock up on, um, on some foam. And here's, I want to give you guys a little secret of what I do here too. Let me grab this one. Do you see the difference in color? I don't know if you can. I hope you can. My watercolor paper is more of a creamy color, and the um, the Nina Solar White is is a much brighter white. Oh, I got ink on me. Anyway, that's a much brighter white. So when I'm working on things, if I were going to put this sentiment on cardstock, okay, on a, on another like a strip of cardstock instead of stamping it directly on to my watercolor. I would actually use a little scrap piece of my watercolor to do that, my watercolor card to do that, because I want to make sure that that matches, that all the white paper that I use matches. And I'm pointing this out because when I grab my Nina Solar White card to stamp my images, uh, it's not typically, it, it is a little more expensive. I love that it's heavy duty, um, but it's not typically what I would use to mount uh, in, in, in you know like an image or paper or something like, like that to it but I used it when I cut this other piece of, of um, or die cut because I wanted to make sure that they match perfectly when my card comes together I'm a real stickler about having all my colors match especially my whites and I can see a, a big difference in whites if they don't match so I made sure that I used the exact same white card stock for all the pieces in my card so I'm going to go ahead, this is my foam roll, I'm going to go ahead and put some foam on the back of this die cut, and let's see if I can cut it to the right size. If you don't cut it to the right size, make sure you save these little pieces. I always put these little pieces on my foam roll because I will use them later. And I'm a real stickler about putting evenly to some degree. I mean, it's not perfectly spaced, but I try and put the foam all throughout the entire area um, evenly so that I don't get any dips in the cardstock. Um, you know, with, you know, if the card goes into the envelope and so on and it gets, it, it might get a little bit smashed or I don't want to have dips in that. So I make sure I put, I support it all throughout the, the whole back of it. So there we go. Doesn't that make a difference having just that little bit of lift? It's just so much prettier. You get a little bit of a shadow underneath and you can just see the dimension. It's just much nicer than having it flat on the card base. Now we're going to go ahead. I'm going to color up this little image here. And I've got, this is literally just going to take me a few moments to do. Um, and then I have my little trusty thing here. Okay, so I grabbed some Copic markers. I am a Copic user. It's just what I started with. You can use any uh, alcohol markers you want. I grabbed two purples, a light and a and a dark and a and a pink. And I'm really, I was really just trying to go with uh, the colors that I used in um, uh, in the image that I colored up here. Oh, you know what I need is a yellow because I got to color that bumblebee. Alan, would you grab me like a Y? You can answer the question. Grab me a Y15. Is this a Y15? Yes. Oh, am I going to color the bee and the butterflies? Yes, I absolutely am. No, honey, not this. I need a Copic marker. They're on the wall. Okay. There you go. Okay. So, yes, I am. So, I've got a Y15. So, I've got four of my markers here. So, this is a Y15. It's a nice bright yellow. And I'm just going to touch this in here a little bit. Get my color in there. 
very, very simply. See how quickly that came together? Doesn't take a lot. And I'm going to be a little strategic in my color placement. Um, let me see. I'm going to put, because I have this bright pink flower here, I'm going to put, I'm going to make that one be the bright pink. I think. Yeah. So let me get my little butterfly here. And this is a, another purple, a little bit brighter. And I'm not worrying about shadow or shading here. And then this bright pink here. There we go. Super, super cute. And then another thing that I did down here, I don't know if you can see this. You see how I grounded them? I grabbed, I grabbed some grays. And all I did was put some little shadows under there so that they didn't look like they were floating up in the air. <laughs> that yellow, I'm going to brighten that. I just want to add a little bit more. There we go. All right. And so then the next thing I'm going to do, doesn't that look so cute? I think it looks so much better. It's a more kind of comprehensive um, arrangement with the little critters on there. It just looks like they're flying around there, and I think it's so sweet. So let's see, I'm going to get the foam roll out again, and I'm going to pop up the, uh, the little scene on foam. There we go. Do you have any other questions? Uh, Sharon saying, do you tend to use the same 15 or so pens? Okay, so Sharon is asking, do I tend to use the same 15 or so pens on my projects? Um, I'm a, um, I, I would say for certain things, I wouldn't say 10 or 15. I'm probably more like the same 40 or 50, <laughs> to be honest with you. Because, um, you know, when I'm working with, with, if I'm working with green, with grass, I'm usually working with, maybe three or four different greens. Uh, when I did the purple and the pink here, I seriously have three different purples and three different pinks. Uh, the green here, it, it seriously have three different greens. This brown pot here, I think I have maybe six or seven different shades in there because I start really light with beiges and I kind of build it up. Um, the orange is just one orange. The yellow, believe it or not, I have two different yellows in here because I wanted to have a little bit of a darker color underneath it. And then with my grays, I've got two different grays here. So, um, you know, that's just for this this here. So, you know, when I'm working, I, I'll, 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 this is more of a blue purple. Actually, it's more of a violet, but there is more of a blue violet. And then there's all different purple. So I try and mix it up because I don't want to get tired or bored with the same colors. And um, so I do have a pretty good collection of my markers, and I do try and mix them up a little bit. Um, do I remember what grays I used for the shadows? Yes, these were actually neutrals. And let me do me a favor. Who, does anybody want me to explain, to show you? Do, 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 do you understand the grays? Um, I used a neutral gray. There's, there's ends. There's, there's cools, which are C's, and then there's W's, which are warms. Your warms have a brown undertone. Um, if I were going to be shadowing with over something that's brown, like this pot, for example, I would definitely use my warm grays. So I think there's definitely a need for having those different grays. So I would use my warm grays here. If I were going to be shadowing some of my cooler colors here, like my purple and, um, and, and these pinks, I would be shadowing, I would grab my cools or even my neutrals. Um, if I'm going to be working with a penguin, okay, if I'm going to be coloring a penguin and my penguin is near water and stuff like that and I have blue in the picture already, I would probably use my cool grays to color that penguin. But if I'm doing a penguin and I don't have the, cool, the, the blues and stuff in there, I would probably go with a neutral so it gets to be much more black. Does that make sense? And I would use neutrals if I were doing things like tires and you know, like car tires and stuff like that where I don't want it to be have that blue or, or that, that brown in there. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, 
but I think and the I, 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 I think that they're 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 very much it's very very much necessary I think Copic also has tees which I think is like a tone to me when I I, I do have them but I, I don't use them because I use the ends which are the neutrals and they're very very much the same as the neutrals in my opinion I've got a really good eye for color and seeing difference in color so um, I, I don't see much of a difference in those can um, explain the neutral again? Can I explain who the, uh, can I explain the neutral yeah, again? Yeah, Sharon's asking about it where it's not uh, brown, not Okay. Blue. Yeah, Sharon, um, Sharon, the, the, the difference in the grays, a neutral does not have a blue undertone like a cool. It does not have a brown undertone like a warm. Okay? A neutral is, is more like a true shade of a black. Okay, it's just going to be lighter and lighter and lighter. It's not going to have another undertone to it. Um, the neutrals are, are, I mean, it's, it's absolutely a necessity, in, in my opinion, to have them. So, a little fun thing that I, I like to do. I have this glitter gloss here. This is, uh, you've seen me use this. This is, this is from Nuvo. And um, I'm going to put this on my flowers. It just adds a little bit of a glitter. It's, it's not really strong. Uh, which is why I like it. So when the light hits it, it just gives you a little bit of a glitter look. I think that's kind of fun. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Let's see if you can see that in the camera. Is it showing up? Yep, there's that little bit of sparkle. Just a little bit of sparkle, something fun. So I think that came out really cute. I like having the foam on both of those. I think it gives really, really nice layers and textures. Um, Erlene is asking, do I have a marker that I just says, do you have a marker that you designed for us to buy to match your inks? I do not have, uh, we do not have markers, uh, unfortunately. I'm sorry. And then Sandra's asking, what do I put on the inside of my cards? I will actually, on the inside of my cards, I, I will do one of two things. This, this is just left if I wanted to hand write something. Um, but I might actually go back to my uh, to my stamps my stamp sets and pull some some larger sentiments and just stamp a sentiment in here kind of up toward the top and then either leave some space here for a signature or a handwritten note or I might do my handwritten note over here. Um, sometimes I, I will actually put a little scene or I'll stamp some little image images over there like this one to be honest with you could be super cute. You know what? This could be really really cute if I stamped um if i stamped some little chicks a couple little chicks down here in the corner and colored them in i think it could be really really cute because it says you'll always be my spring chicken and then to open it up and have a couple little stamped images on the inside there i think would be absolutely adorable so you can you can continue using your stamps on the inside of your cards as well your character stamps i mean so here's the two cards oh and lisa says you forgot to say what numbers were for your shadows. Oh, the shadows that I did, I used a neutral, and I think I used N00 and N1. No, wait a minute, let me think. Yep, I think it was N00 and N1 for my shadows because I wanted them to be really light down there at the bottom. Okay. I'm going to switch my camera back. Oops, got my green screen. There you go. <laughs> Thought I hit the button right. Did you see? Did you like the green back there? That's pretty cool. It's really, really neat that we have. The, if, if you guys could see the way it's set up in here, I should actually probably have. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I'll, I think I'll take some photos and put the photos up there for you guys to see them because it's pretty cool. My husband's like a real kind of techie guy, and so he's kind of set us up with with some really neat things here. It's kind of fun and. Um, and he gets to use some of the equipment. He's he's the IT director for a law firm here, and so because because he's working at home in this you know social isolation thing, um, he actually brings up some of the equipment from his office, from the office that we have here now, um, that he brought from work. So it's actually kind of cool. But anyway, he works the lighting and all that stuff. So okay, so Daisy Ray is asking, will you be designing an envelope die for your slimline scallop die set? That's a good question. Um, I haven't thought about that actually. I just so you know, you can actually use the the regular like business sized envelopes for that. They they fit perfectly in there. 
um, and uh, and you can decorate those. You know, if you get if you get like if you get one that's more of a heavier cardstock rather than just you know the basic you know one from Staples or whatever. Uh, if you stamp that, you can color it up and you can make them look really pretty. You can actually put some of your pattern paper on there and do some pretty things with it too to kind of make that crafty without having to put a whole lot of money into uh, into a die or 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 you know making it. But uh, but no, that's a very good idea. I hadn't thought about that. So we will take a look at that. Oh my goodness! So we're a little bit early today, and we do have a giveaway. So let's see. What are we going to give away? My little chicks there, look at them, aren't they cute? I just think they're so sweet. I have a little story, because I'm, I'm actually, I, I love birds, I gotta tell you. I'm a little bit um, afraid of them <laughs> when they get close to my head. Or when they're, we, I, there, there was a duck when I was uh, in our neighborhood. I think I was in, in high school maybe. And our, um, our neighbor, in the summertime, their their daughter always loved to have. They would always get her like a little baby duck, and 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 then it would grow up, and all summer long. And we lived in a in a in this in a subdivision, so all summer long we would have you know a duck. Well, it, it th there was this one. Its name was George. And for some reason, when I would, it's like it knew when I was going to be heading out to work in like in in the morning like because this was in the summertime and um and it would always fly over and it would land on the hood of my car and actually now that i think about it i think my mom used to feed it ritz crackers and so when we would open up the front door it would fly over and it would land on the hood of my car and and it, I, I thought it was the cutest thing until one day it chased me down the street i was trying to get it out of the street because it was trying to drink from a puddle of water and it literally just chased me all the way down the street <laughs> squawking and flapping his wings and I was like oh my gosh so from that moment forward I was I get a little bit nervous when they get too close to me but anyway I the little chicks those don't make me nervous I think they're sweet oh people want to see my craft room my studio now would not be the time <laughs> for that <laughs> but we could definitely I we could definitely do that and uh, maybe, maybe I'll put up some photos or something for you um, so let's do our giveaway. The giveaway, oh, <laughs> it's kind of hard to see this because I have the green screen. Anytime you see green on, on any of the stuff here, when I have the green screen on, it gets rid of the green. So anyway, let me switch the camera here because I want you to see what we're giving away. I'm going to do a giveaway with this stamp set and with the Practically Square die set. So this is going to come from the comments. So I need, if you haven't left a comment, you got to leave a comment. Oh, Candace says, I got chased by a rooster once. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We cannot have a rooster. It is. It's terrifying when, they, when, when they're when they chasing you. Yes, my husband said we cannot have a rooster. I, I, it's it's kind of funny. In, in where, where we live, um, we live in an older uh, area, and... Um, there was there was an old uh what is it called the like bylaws, bylaws and an association and everything which is not active anymore but it's funny when we read the bylaws the only restriction was that you could not have a rooster i i don't know why but i thought that was hilarious <laughs> so okay sharon says we have geese chase us oh no you don't <laughs> kick them no oh you kick toward them okay <laughs> okay so we're going to draw a name and you're going to get, the winner is going to get this stamp set and the Practically Square die set. So Mr. Hunt, I need the name please. Mr. Hunt. I, I would rather you pick. Okay. The winner <laughs> is, drum roll pre, please. Margaret Chapman! <laughs> Margaret Chapman! <laughs> Margaret Chapman is the winner. You're going to get both of these. So I need you to do me a favor and send me a private message in Facebook or you can send me an email at customerservice at ldrscreative.com. I need your complete mailing address so that I can get these or my husband can get these <laughs> in the mail to you right away so you can start having some fun. Yay, Margaret! Woohoo!
<laughs> so much fun. Okay, so what are we going to be doing next week? I have some plans. So next week, when we were here on Tuesday, somebody was asking me that I, I did the I worked with the barnyard on Tuesday, if you weren't here, uh, and somebody was asking me if the cow in the other set would work with the barnyard, or with the, would work with the barn stamp. And I think, because this is the only stamp set that has, what happened? Oh, okay, that was weird. We kind of froze up. This is the only stamp set. Why isn't this, it's not in focus. It's kind of strange. All right, well, let it me. It doesn't auto focus, focus on your face. Okay. Let me switch this. Okay. Yep, I'm gonna switch the camera. This is this stamp set has the cow in it, and it has the little chicken and and all the little um, flowers and stuff in it, and this adorable jar, and um, I think it's so cute. And there's it's called Homegrown with Love, and we have stamps that, or I'm sorry, dies that will cut out um, all of the images in there as well. So I thought that I would work with this and probably the farmers market paper pack because I haven't done anything with this yet. And I'm excited to do so. I absolutely love cows, and uh, and I thought I would just kind of you know work with the um, the whole barnyard thing again because I thought it was a lot of fun. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put together uh, this is this is solid stamping also. So uh, I thought that would be fun to actually work with, do some solid stamping, and I'll probably have two or three cards. Uh, to to kind of show you how this one is going to work and uh, so that's what I'm planning on working on that over the weekend and I think we're going to do that on Tuesday so that will be fun so we're a little bit early if anybody has any more questions I would be happy to answer otherwise I think we might be done let's see do we have any more questions have you changed the time of when you're on? Sandra's asking. Nope, so far, I, I actually, I, I know I put the question out there before, if anybody was interested in maybe an earlier time around four o'clock, and I had a lot of comments, a lot of people saying that it was just not a good time for them, so I haven't changed it. So we're gonna continue with the 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, let me see, any other questions? Let's see. Can you tell us the theme of your upcoming release? Oh, the theme of the upcoming release. Ooh. Uh, mice? No, they're not <laughs> mice. We actually have our next release. Uh, because of everything that's going on with the whole pandemic and everything, it kind of messed up our shipping and manufacturing a little bit. So that's why it's taken so long for us to get our next collection out. And, um, Alan, just so you know, this is blurry. I can see it's it's... I'm not even in focus. Can't fix it now. So anyway, um, so our next collection is actually going to be coming out in uh, early June. So it, it is going to be next month and we've got, part of it is it has to do with like, I'm going to say summer activities. <laughs> <laughs> I want it to be a surprise. <laughs> So part of it is going to be is is going to be summer activities. We do have some you know some more interactive stuff and pocket pails in there as well that I think you're just going to love. I think they're just super sweet. We've got some more fun dies in there as well. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, so without giving away too much, I'm going to leave it at that. And uh, but I I think I think you're going to like it. I'm really excited about it. So what else? Do we have any other questions? Will some be on HSN? Those will not be on HSN. No, we we try we 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 try and keep what goes on HSN. Um, a lot of the time, the things that go on HSN are exclusive, and so we can't have them them elsewhere. And um, so we do have to try and keep those kind of separate. But um, but we do have some really really cool things coming up on HSN in July. They're doing they're doing a um, uh, a whole special thing in July that I, I'm not sure I can say because <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know if they've announced it. But we have some really, really neat things that are going to be on in July. So th that'll be completely separate. And so we'll have our, our, our regular collection coming out in June, and then we'll have um, a whole other collection on HSN in July. So it'll be a lot of fun.
Yay! Lots of crafting. Uh, do you have a code for the free stamp when we place the order? Nope. Do we have a code for the free stamp set when we place the order? We do not. On our homepage, it will say at the top of our homepage, it will say that, you know, with your next order, you're going to be getting this stamp set. We're just going to pop it in there. You don't have to do any work for it. You don't have to click on anything. You don't have to search for anything. It's just going to go in there. And um, I don't know why. It's just not, it's, everything is really blurry. Hmm. Um, anyway, no, we're just going to pop that in there, and you're going to get that nice little surprise uh, when you get your package. So that'll be fun. And I can't wait to see what you guys make with these. I we, These literally just arrived yesterday. So I haven't even made anything with them. So I'm going to try and work with this uh, over the weekend so that I can get some cards up on the website and I can show them to you here maybe on Tuesday. So that'll be fun too. Anything else? Any other questions? Yes. Yes? <laughs> What? Um, oh, there's all kinds of questions coming. Up. What date in July for HSN? I do not know the show date yet. Isn't that terrible? I do not know. Are you going to have? Actually, let me let me rephrase. I do not remember. I've had too many numbers pass through my brain in the last <laughs> in the last couple weeks, um, so I don't know the show date right now. Um, but I can be prepared with that on Tuesday. Am I going to have any discount codes for Mother's Day? That is a great question. Yes. <laughs> yes, Mother's Day is coming up. That is, wow, that's this weekend. Um, yeah, so yeah, so stay tuned. Um, you're going to want to check our Instagram you're going to want to check our Facebook group. If you're not already in our Facebook group, make sure you join our Facebook group. Uh, we will post codes there. And um, I would say subscribe to our blog because we have a daily blog that goes out. It's an inspiration blog. It goes out almost every day. We usually have discount codes in there. And um, whenever we send a newsletter, there's discount codes in there. So I would say definitely check you know, all of our social media so that you see when we have discount codes. Okay, um, it's possible too that sometimes we put them on our on on the the main homepage of the website too. So it depends on what where the discount codes are going through. Sometimes we have them just you know specifically for our members of our Facebook group, um, or just for you know people who subscribe to the blog or to the newsletter. So it's it's a good idea to to kind of follow those. Uh, what stores do you have in Canada? What stores do we have in? Canada? Um, oh my goodness, you're going to, I, ooh, I can't think of the name of Natalie's store right now. Oh my goodness, for the life of me. Um, I can't, there's, I, I cannot think of the name of the store right now. I'm, I'm blank. Um. Send me a private message. Uh, whoever is asking that question, I didn't see the question. Send me a private message, and I can I can send you a link to that, to the because I, I can't I am at a loss in my brain right now. Okay, I think that's it. It is eight o'clock already. Oh my goodness gracious! Thank you all for being here. Again, an absolute pleasure. I just love that you know I can maybe teach you something or entertain you in some way. <laughs> Or just spend a little bit of time with you. Uh, I, it's it's just such a pleasure. So thank you so much. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. And um, I will see you on Tuesday. Bye for now.